how honest is your mechanic? Do you know? Do you not? Most likely you don't. Subtag Garage TV, welcome. Yo, welcome back to the channel. Yo, my name is Pablo. I, I live, work, and breathe here at the Tire Garage in Santa Ana. It's a little tire shop located in Southern California. Santa Ana, to be more specific. And uh, welcome. How honest is your mechanic? On today's episode, I want to go over that. Honesty, in terms of working at a shop, in terms of dealing with customers and stuff like that, I want to show you three instances and how I handled it this week. Uh, three instances where I had to, you know, I had to be honest with the customer. Sometimes that's not in my best benefit, at least in the short term, the way I see it. Long term, it's always going to be benefit you, to be honest. Um, why? Because customers most of the time recognize that and will be back, will trust you more. So in the end, I think it, it's a positive thing. So let me show you three instances where in the past couple weeks, I've had to be honest with customers and whether it be good or bad, uh, whether I made money or not, it's, 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 it's always a good thing in the long term. Okay, so stay tuned. Get to work. <laughs> All right, here's where that honesty factor comes in. Okay, this customer left his car here this morning. He put this tire on, I wanna say maybe six months ago, seven months ago, and it's still in good condition. This other one, he put it on way back when longer i think when he bought this truck and it's still in okay condition like it's still he's gonna probably need it soon just depending how much he drives but the two back ones are done that's where the honesty factor like i said kicks in so customers like you because they trust you because they trust you they can bring your cars to you and just drop them off and, and think that they're that you're gonna do the best job you could which is what i do i do the best job i could right in this case, for example, I can sell them all four and make good money. And the way I just spoke to him, he was thinking he was going to need want all four. But I told him he can go without the front two for now. It's always best to do all four. I agree. But in this case, because of the way he works, I know he can withstand those two t front tires for a, another good six months if so, um, if not a little bit more, just depending how much he drives. Um, so... I'm going to be honest with them. Uh, that's why the customers like me. That's why customers bring their cars into me. That's why they just kind of trust me kind of blindly sometimes, which is cool. I appreciate that. I really, truly do. That's what I work for. That's what I strive for. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do two tires, put the two new ones in the front, put the two old ones in the back, and do the alignment, do the oil change, and we're good with this one. I saved this customer some money for now, but... I also made him a better customer. You understand? That's something a lot of shops don't see and a lot of shops just, they, they think about the now, right? I wanna keep this customer and I wanna keep him around. I will be and continue to be as honest as I could. So for now, let's get to work. Yo, you saw that? I just pretty much popped out the light and moved the connection and it turned on. So for some reason, it just wasn't plugged in right. I don't know if somebody maybe messed with it before or if it was just, it wiggled loose. I don't know. It looks like it's the original equipment. It doesn't look like it's been replaced or nothing like that. So I don't know, it turned on and I'm punching it to see if See if it'll turn off but it's it stays on so i think we're good that's all it took again that's another honesty thing do i go back to the customer and tell him hey i fixed your light 
charge them a bulb, charge them 10, 20 bucks, whatever it costs. I could, but why? I mean, don't don't mess with people that way. Uh, this took me maybe five minutes to do. If so, you know, I'm not gonna charge him for that. I'm gonna just, it's a good customer. He's spent a good amount of money here, so I'm not gonna do that to him, you know? So back to an honesty. It comes back to honesty, same deal. So let's check out the transmission fluid and we should be good. So I'm can scanning this thing because look at this. ABS light, check engine light, oil light, battery light, traction control light, all of them on. And blinking. When they're blinking like that, it's not a good sign. I turn it on and it autom automatically turns back off. So let's see what the scanner says. There's 10 codes for the brakes. The engine has an ECT code too. 12 codes for the ECU controls the fuel injection. I think the computer is shutting off the car before it even gets started. Mass airflow, low circuit, intake temperature sense, circuit high output, engine stall history, star, startability mis malfunction, rough idling. So let's go through all these codes and check one by one. Let me get a notebook. There are a lot of codes. What's up, Tiger Garage TV? So today's Friday. What did I say Wednesday or Tuesday about honesty? It's a big thing, it's a hot topic. And coincidentally, today I'm going to show you something. So this car that's right above me, it's a 2014 Chevy, uh, Chevy Malibu. Beautiful car, I love these cars. Um, it had a cracking sound in the rear. So when it would go up and down, you drove it, it heard it was really loud, really pronounced. You can really tell. And I wish I could find what it was. Again, honesty. I didn't record yesterday. Yesterday I did that car, that, that Scion, and this one. And I should have recorded, but I didn't. But honesty. You know what it was? That sound was coming from... Check it out. This is the back of the car, okay? This is the tailpipe. That's where the exhaust goes. This is the control arm. That sound was coming from in here. In here was a rock. In fact, you can see the, the scrape right there from the rock. See that? That mark right there, I don't know, I hope the camera can pick it up, is a scrape from that rock. I could easily have charged the customer for the control arm, done the job, and, and everything would have been fine. It would have been fixed. But why do that? The control arm, was not the issue and then you remember this one too right this one you know what the issue was <laughs> whoever did his battery didn't plug in the mass airflow sensor the math sensor MAF was not plugged in so that's why it did all that now yesterday I opened up the hood and check this out and connected it and now look I swear that's all I did connect the mass airflow sensor now none of those lights are on am I an awesome mechanic no I just I'm just being honest dude it's I'm gonna feel horrible if I charge this guy 800 bucks for a new computer which I thought it was the computer because everything was going off I even got um, I even got a code for the computer so, that's all it takes, that's all it is, honesty. So on that note, I'm gonna cut this video short. Let's, uh, the little Scion left already, and uh, he's uh, out with his rightful owner. Let me do the oil change on this one, and it should be good to go. Um, this one will be picked up. But uh, I hope you learned your lesson, honesty. It goes a long way, man, honestly. The dude from the Scion, right now, he, uh, I told he says how much? I said, look, you've been coming here for a long time. I'm not going to charge you anything. All I did was connect, connect the math first. Math, so, and he's like, uh, nah, dude, come on. You got to charge me for something. He, ex he fully expected, he was fully was expecting to pay about 800 bucks, 900 bucks, 1,000 bucks. 
uh, he gives me a hundred dollar bill. I said, look, it's a little bit too much. I'm like, but you know, don't worry about it. He's like, no, no, take it. I was fully ex expecting to pay more. He's all, you save me money. So I appreciate that. Um, I was hesitant to take the money. I didn't want to, uh, it feels like I'm stealing from him. It's a lot of money for something so little that I did, you know, but he's a good customer. He knows I've been honest with him in a situation like that has pa happened in the past before. So, you know, it is what it is. So, so yeah, catch you on the next one. And hit that subscribe, hit that share, hit that like, hit that bell button, okay? All of them. All of them. Yes, you heard me right, all of them. Anyways, let's get to work. Let's get to work. This is that rock that was lodged in that Impala, or that Malibu. This rock was just lodged in between there. So this is what was causing that noise. And it was really defined, you can really hear it. It really seemed like a bushing was out or something like that. So, but yeah, this sucker was it. I'm gonna keep it there just so I can show the owner.